All right, so let's take a look at this FFTVI. So the first thing is to set up the sample rate and the number of samples. So that's inside of the simulate signal block. So we have a thousand samples per second. We'll start with 128 here. This number of samples is normally a power of two for the FFT. I like to simulate acquisition timing, but you can run it as fast as possible on your choice. The frequency up here is overridden because we have this coming in from outside, so it ignores what's set from the inside if you hook something up to the outside. Unfortunately, we can't set up the N and FS to run in. The block just doesn't have that option. So I, I'll put these in here um, to match. So I've got a thousand samples per second and 128 samples. So I want to keep those matching so that the analysis is done. I use these two numbers to calculate all of these parameters to deal with the FFT. Now I'm going to set the frequency here to be some of the, something around 150. It looks like 147. That's good enough. And I'll click Run. And we have the time data, so the sine wave on the top plot. And then this is the FFT, and so it's a sine wave with a single frequency. So we see this big peak should be right about at 150. We can zoom in if we want to by typing right here. So we see that the peak is at 148, something like that. So what you get with the FFT is the the points on this plot are separated by delta f so the points on the time plot are separated by delta t seconds that this is frequency on the x-axis and amplitude on the y-axis make sure your plot says that and the delta f is 7.8 so if if our point here isn't between these two then the the amplitude gets spread over all of them so Put this back to 0 and 500. With 1,000 hertz, anything over 500 is alias, so that's the, the natural scale. And if we run this continuously, I can change the knob, and you can see that the frequency is identified. Low frequency, you can see the slower frequency and the lower frequency here. Um, if I bring it up to 200 or so, I get 200. And if you get it just right, you can see that the peak is spread between these two points. That's the leakage. Um, and it's because we have to have the, the amplitude is only every 7.8 hertz. If we change the number of samples, go in here, change this to 1024, keep this matching just so we know what we're talking about. Now if I hit run, See, the delta F is less than a hertz, and this is a much taller and skinnier spike just because the points are closer together, so it, it finds the, um, the frequency a lot more accurately this way. Runs slower, though, because it has to do 1,024 samples. Okay, so here I've got basically the same VI, except instead of simulating the signal, simulating the function generator, we've got this sound file loader. And so if you find a file, you have to click just right to get that to be the chooser. There it is. Um, I will find this one. So I pick the file that I want, and now that will come in from my hard drive from this file. It will get played to my speaker. Hopefully we'll be able to hear it on the video and it'll do the FFT. So let's see what happens. So that was the sound. Here's the sound as a, as a function of time. If we zoom in here, maybe to so there we can see that it looks like a sine wave with a pretty dominant frequency. It's sampled at a very high rate, so 
we can zoom this in as well. So let's put that down to around 1,000. Let's see what we got. So we got a big spike here. Um, and I could zoom in further to find that, that number, but it's between 400 and 500, a little less than 450. And that's the tone, that's the musical note that we were hearing. So you can look that up online and find out what frequency um, that given note is.